And I'll say good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Thames Valley Chamber of Commerce. Today's webinar is going to be about the 10 ways to overcome nerves before your next presentation. I'm Narinda Multani, account manager here at the Thames Valley Chamber. I support companies through the portfolio of benefits and services we offer. So that's me there. And um, I'm going to pass over to um, Alexander McWilliam, who's from um, Improfa Business. So he's one of my members who will be delivering today's webinar. And before I pass you over to him, I just want to remind you that, to advise you, that this webinar is being recorded, so you can access it again through the Chamber website, and that's under the section um, of Webinar Library. And also, if you've got any questions, then there's that chat box there, and uh, you can post any questions, and Alexander will answer those accordingly. So I believe it will be probably towards the end, but please do post those through, and I'll monitor it. Alexander. So thank you very much and over to Alexander. Hello, uh, good morning everyone. I'm Alex uh, from Improv for Business and we're going to talk through um, overcoming nerves. So how do we overcome nerves uh, during a presentation or just before a presentation? So in the chat box, could you type in uh, how you feel about presentation? So if someone was to say to you, right, you've got to do a presentation tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., how would you feel? Um, Dread them, yeah. <clears throat> Stressed, yeah. Anxious, anxious, terrified. Okay, so we're going to talk about always thinking uh, I'm going to be better than I am. Love, I oh, love them. Great. If you know what you're talking about, so if you got thrown in the deep end, uh, Anna, Anna Marie, by going, ah, you've got to do a presentation in ten minutes on this, you might be a bit terrified. But if you know what you're talking about, you're fine. Um, less than thirty people, fine. More than I panic. Okay. So today's uh, webinar is going to chat about why we, why we potentially get nervous and some ways to overcome them. So sometimes you might feel absolutely terrified, like, oh my God, I have a presentation. And other times you might just want to run away and just never, ever come back. So why do we get nervous? So I think the main reason is a fear of social harm. So we're getting up stage in front of everyone else. So there's an army of uh, army people we're watching. Uh, who are watching us and we're absolutely terrified. We don't know if we're gonna be able to cope. So we need to find a way to combat that. So fear of social harm and fear of physical harm are the same thing. So when we get scared, we go, oh my God, they're gonna attack us, they're gonna, they're gonna beat us down and we're gonna die. If we get rejected by that group, it's gonna have an impact on our work. For example, our colleagues might not think we're any good, our boss might not think we can do it, <clears throat> friends and family might not respect us and we fear that and we fear that's going to impact our lives we don't want to do it we get absolutely terrified so how do we overcome this so one thing is coaching so can we find someone who's going to be able to coach us through that so they're going to give us tips and hints and exercises to overcome that to make us confident and competent in our ability to deliver a presentation and we need incremental exposure so there's no point sort of chucking in the deep end because you're absolutely going to be terrified and never going to want to do it again so the first thing first is can you say one word to yourself can you do that if you can do that then you can do a sentence then you can do a paragraph then you can do a page then you can do 10 minutes then you do it to another person and then another person and another person and slowly expand your comfort zone so you're feeling more and more confident in your ability and you might find that it's your friends that terrify you more or your family, or it might be one person at work that you're absolutely terrified of doing a presentation in front of. So the aim is to be able to do it in front of them and then you'll hopefully be able to overcome those nerves. So slow incremental exposure is gonna be the best thing to not overload your system and be able to cope with that kind of stressor. Because basically every time we get stressed, we go into fight or flight mode and we just want to run out of the door so we need to slowly expand it so you don't perceive it as a potential threat and that's going to take exposure uh, and practice uh, how many of you in the chat being honest if you were to give a presentation how much do you prepare for it uh, you can say you know zero you don't do any preparation you try and wing it or 10 you methodically prepare every single thing you're going to say so in the chat yeah a little six five so we know we're not 10 good Sarah sometimes 
So we know we're not, some of us aren't preparing that much, some are preparing a lot. And we need to figure out is if we're preparing loads and we're still getting nervous, then it's something about, oh, we need to practice in that stressful situation. If we're not preparing that much, then we know that we're not actually doing the work, uh, enough work. So actually it's our, you know, to a degree, we're not putting the effort in. It's like you wouldn't be able to play a test match without having any practice. So we need to practice, 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 practice will overcome part of those nerves. But I've got some top tips for you, as always. Um, first one, reframe your mind. So when we're, uh, when we're nervous, we, our heart starts going, our hands start shaking, we start imagining the worst case scenario. Now, when we're excited, our heart starts racing, and we start imagining the best case scenario. So all we need to do is reframe our mind of going, oh my God, it's gonna go terribly, to oh my God, it's gonna go amazing. <clears throat> it might feel a bit weird or a bit sort of one of those affirmations, but actually your mind, you know, if you think about something, it's more likely to happen. It not necessarily is going to happen, but it's much more likely. So I would suggest reframe that mind. Say to yourself, I'm so excited and give a reason why. Because usually when we're terrified, we go, I'm terrified or I'm so scared, I'm going to fall on my face. But actually, if we go, I'm so excited, I get to share my idea with the audience. I get to share something I've worked on for ages. So reframe your mind is number one. Number two, no one knows what you've written. No one has a script. No one has your exact speech in front of you. So you could say whatever you like, and no one's going to know if you've said something wrong or not. I think that's something to take comfort in. You could say whatever you like, and no one's going to know if it's right or if it's wrong. So if something goes wrong, take a moment and then just carry on. No one knows what's gonna happen. Second one, breathe. So if you're feeling a bit nervous before a presentation, take a deep breath in, and just do a couple of those, just keep breathing. Because a lot of the time when we get nervous, we start to breathe not very well, and we get to panic, and that exasperates the situation. So take it slow, and just calm everything. You know, a bit of mindfulness, you know, yoga, whatever you want to think about, just, in for a couple of seconds, hold it, and then out for a few seconds. Now, <clears throat> sometimes we've got all that excess energy. We're like, oh, I don't know, I don't know what to do with it. So we need to use it up. Now, you could do stuff like this, um, maybe a bit extreme, but I would encourage you to do things like you could do squats, you could do press ups, you could do a body shake, you could do a little run. Obviously, not too much that you're going to go absolutely dripping with sweat but we just need to use a bit of that excess energy up. So you know, shake it all out, so do a jump, whatever it might be, just get rid of that excess energy. Because we can't tell ourselves, oh, stop feeling all that adrenaline. We go, right, okay, just shake it out, get rid of it, and just carry on. Next one, <clears throat> stay hydrated. Maybe not to this degree, that's quite a lot of water, but I'd encourage you to have you know, a you know, 500 milliliter bottle of water with you, drink some before your presentation, have it with you during the presentation. If you need to take a drink, take a drink. It's not the end of the world. Uh, probably don't have, a, yeah, don't have one of these, <clears throat> which is like a liter and a half bottle of water with you because you'll end up going to the toilet. So I would encourage you to stay hydrated, but don't overhydrate. <clears throat> and stay fed. A lot of the times when we're feeling nervous or anxious, we go, oh, I don't really feel like eating. But actually, that's gonna make the situation worse. So I'd highly encourage you, I love a good banana or a cereal bar or a protein bar, something to keep you fed, give you a bit of energy and not have an empty stomach because that's gonna make the situation worse. So have snacks, always have snacks. I love a good snack. Um, then when you're actually delivering the presentation, find the friendlies, find the people in the audience who are looking friendly. Don't look at someone who's looking like this and looking really bored because actually that's going to make your situation worse because you, you're going to look at them and go, oh my God, oh my God, they're hating it. And you're going to doomsday uh, and spiral downwards. So find the people who are looking at you smiling and engage to them. Find three or four in the audience, space them out. So have one over there, one over there, one over there and do the presentation to them. It will boost your mood and you'll forget about the negative ones that you see in the audience. Have a backup plan. Because sometimes things are not going to work. For example, you might forget your lines. What's the backup line, a backup sort of plan if you forget your lines? Well, you can have a script. You can have a piece of paper near you that has it. I would always encourage having a piece of paper rather than an iPhone or a phone or, or, or sort of an iPad or something because 
The worst case scenario is you're looking at it, it locks the screen, you can't remember your password, you're fumbling around and it's just gonna make the situation worse. So I'd always encourage having a piece of paper or having a couple of sheets of paper so you know where you can do that. Also, technically, things might go wrong. Your slideshow might not start, there might be a problem with the technical, the lights might go, whatever it might happen. Have a plan B. So if you have a fun anecdote or something that is relevant to your presentation, not, oh, guess what? I did this Friday night, it was hilarious. Something that is relevant to your presentation, put that in, use it as a bit of breathe space while the technical things are going wrong or while you're trying to figure out what was the next thing you were going to say. Next, put things into perspective. No one, touch wood, has ever died from giving a presentation. It is not gonna be the end of the world as much as we may, we may think it might be. It is just a presentation. If it goes wrong, it goes wrong. We move on and we build from that. It's not gonna end the world. Lastly, practice, practice, practice. I cannot reiterate this enough. The more you practice, the more competent you will be in your delivery and the more confident you will feel about that. So many of us don't put in enough practice, but the more practice we can do in the arena, so if we can find a stage or we're standing up in front of people practicing delivering it, we're gonna feel much more comfortable. Because actually, most of the nerves and the uncomfortableness comes from dealing with the unknown. We hate dealing with the unknown. So the more we can make it known, the better it will be. And a couple of bonus tips. Write this matters on your presentation. The reason you're doing a presentation is because someone somewhere thought you were good enough and competent enough to do the presentation. And what you're saying is important, so write this matters. And also, give yourself a boost. Say, I've got this. Give yourself that boost every time you go on stage. Go, I've got this, I've got this, I can do this. I am gonna be amazing, and I'm gonna show you how amazing I am. And that's really important, so this matters, and I've got this. And I know I've sort of streamed through loads of those quick 10 tips, because I think it's really important to go, try this, try this, try this, try this. And with that in mind, we've got a Q&A session because I think that will be a much more beneficial part for you. So with this section, if you can write in, if you have any questions and I will try and answer them. Um, and let's see, I'm gonna use this. So, uh, love, find the friendly, it's difficult online though, can't see anyone often. Yeah, so with the, um, with the find the friendlies online, I know Zoom's really hard. I would always want to um, have audience members on camera. Um, so for this, I would much, you know, I'd prefer going, right, everyone on camera, and then I can see you. I go, right, that's a person I can engage with, that's a person, but actually, obviously I can't look at each person, but I can look at the camera, but I can focus my delivery on the people in the audience. I go, right, I want to focus on you, focus on you. So I would always highly encourage you to go, hey, turn on your cameras, I would love to know who I'm talking to. That's why today I much rather have me speaking to you like this rather than being an ominous voice where you don't know who I am or what I look like. Because it gives a conversation. Because that's all a presentation is. It is a conversation between two or more people. And that's what we need to reiterate. Make it a conversation. Um, lovely. Any other questions? Du, 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 du. Could be about anything, about presentations, delivery, public speaking, fears, um, anything you like. What about brain fog? Okay, yeah. So brain fog, uh, halfway through a slide. So <clears throat> sometimes uh, we can be you know, talking through a slide and our brain goes, oh my God, I can't remember what I'm saying. Usually that will happen I would, from experience because you haven't practiced enough. If you practice enough, you should be confident enough that you know it because actually when we memorize our speech, we encode it into our brain and then we retrieve it. If we have, if we, if it has to take a lot of brain power to retrieve that information, it's going to take much more brain power. And then obviously if we get a bit stumbling, we go, oh, panicking, it take, we don't have enough brain power to do that. So I'll say practice, practice, practice is going to help that. But also have a piece of paper, have bullet points of what's on each slide. Go, I'm going to talk about this. I'm going to talk about this. I'm going to talk about this. And I think it's perfectly fine to go, hang on a sec, let me just grab a drink. And when you grab a drink, look at your slideshow and go, right, that's what I need to talk about. And then carry on rather than going, oh my God, I can't remember what I'm doing. What have I got to say? Grab a drink, look at your next note and then go, ah, that's where I was and carry on. And no one will know, no one will be the wiser. Um, 
how to avoid looking like you're reading. So with this one, I know it's really hard with presentations, but I would highly encourage you to learn it. And the more you practice it, the more you learn it, and the more it's in your head, it's going to be reading. Because what we don't want is someone, like if I gave the presentation today going, okay, so what you've got to do is you've got to do this. And it's reading it. We want to try and engage the audience. Because if, I'm just, if you're just reading it, you might as well just give me the piece of paper and I'll read it myself. The point of a presentation is to deliver it in a way that couldn't be read. So we're giving it a much more different dynamic. So I'd encourage learning. Again, it's about learning it and practicing it and developing it as much as possible. Um, okay, I freeze when audience gives no response at all and seems to gabble on, which ultimately ends up trailing off to the point. How do I avoid this? Okay, so sometimes your audience aren't going to respond. You, you can't really predict. Some audiences, if you do the same presentation, you know, week in, week out, you might get an audience that goes, oh my God, this is amazing. Oh yeah, clap, clap, and we really engage. You also might get some that don't do anything. You might get some that are just sitting there and you just don't know how to react to them. I would always say, in regards to practicing it, I would say, do your presentation and then can you go, can you do your presentation and go, can I cut it by half? Can I cut the whole thing? Can I get rid of the jargon? Is everything I'm saying relevant to my presentation or am I rambling on? And the best way to do it is to be brutally honest. So you can do a presentation and say a slideshow and go, for example, you might go, the best way is to stand up in front of an audience and say this, and that's that. So practice making final statements throughout your presentation and see if you can do that and getting it nice to the point. Um, again, it's pra practice, practice, practice. Again, the more you experience it, the better you'll become. Because in general, a lot of you probably haven't had much presentation training. You probably had more training and more experience doing Excel, Word, whatever it might be in your business, because you use that all the time. But how often do you actually deliver your presentations or practice it? It is probably very limited or a fraction of the amount of time that you use in your other lives or your other parts of your sort of work life. So I'd say if you can, practice, practice, practice. But also, we can practice in our head and we can type it out, but this mouth also needs to practice because these lips and this tongue is, is a muscle and we need to practice it. You can't just, if you're thinking about, for example, playing tennis, you can't just sort of, oh yeah, I'm gonna imagine that's how to hit the ball. You have to practice the muscle movement to get it in your body. And I'll suggest the same thing for your lips, your tongue, your jaw, all of that, your body, getting used to practicing. Um, what do you say to an audience if you don't know the answer to a question? Uh, Nicola, I think it's perfectly honest to say, um, I don't know that answer, but I will find out for you. I think it's perfectly honest because there's no point you trying to lie and blag your way through. Again, it depends on a situation. If you're with a client and they ask you a question, I would say, um, I will get back to you on that. I think that's really important. Um, but there's nothing wrong in saying, I don't know the answer, unless you're supposed to be an expert in that field. Uh, <laughs> then you probably don't want to say, oh, I don't know the answer to that. But I think it's perfectly fine. It's perfectly humbling to say, I don't know the answer. I think it's quite arrogant to assume that you, you might know everything. So I think go, yep, I don't know that answer, but I will find out or my colleague can tell you about that. Um, okay, so difficult uh, when includes a lot of technical data, uh, tax data. Um, so Rachel, okay, yes. Yeah, so yeah, so is this a, going back to the avoid looking like you're reading? So a lot of people, people will have their presentation um, and they'll use it as a script. So for example, tax data like this, and you can read it to a degree, but you can make it interesting. Like for example, you, you don't have to go uh, in, you know, in the first quarter, we earned this. And in the second quarter, we earned this. Do it like a racehorse presenter. And in the first quarter, we earned this. And then we went up, we went up, we went up, up, up. And then we went down, we went so far down. You know, there's ways to present the same information in a much more interesting and novel way. And if you deliver it in a novel way, your audience are going to remember it. Because yes, tax stuff and technical stuff is really complicated and it's quite heavy for us to sort of uh, intake. So if we presented in an interesting and novel way, I would say, I would encourage you to practice that and try it. See if it's appropriate. It might not be appropriate to do something like that. But again, seeing where your audience is might find the best way. And again, it's practice, practice, practice. Again, if you know the stats and figures, you can refer back to it. You can go, okay, so it's 20,000 pounds, we earned this and did this, and you have to pay this and this and this. So I would suggest keep going like that. Um, voice, yes. 
So some people can put you to sleep. Some people talk like this and it's very boring. And every time they talk, it's very boring. and It's all monotonous and they can barely speak. Or they, or they always talk like this. And it doesn't really sound very assuring because they keep going up at the end. And it doesn't make them sound really sort of confident. So with the voice, I always say a great way, if you feel that you're quite monotonous, sing it, sing your presentation, try something and go sing it. Go, I'm going to talk to you about tax and do it as a practice. And what that does is it reminds your body and your voice that you've got a much greater range that you can use. So sing your presentation, find all the dynamics, do it in a different way. Try as a stand-up comedian, try as a sports commentator, try in all these different ways in the rehearsal room. And then when you get to delivery, you can find all of these dynamics are implemented in your presentation. Um, <clears throat> what's the best breathing technique to conquer last minute nerves? So last minute nerves, I would say, take a deep breath in. So, and then hold it and then, and take out. So it's, it's just keeping slow, slowing down that breathing. You know, if you want to kind of, you breathe in for five, you hold it for three, you know, breathe out for seven, all of those different techniques. I would also encourage you, it's quite a mental thing. <clears throat> so actually our mind is going to be much more controlling on that. So if we're feeling anxious, that breathing is really hard to stop. But if we go, oh my God, I'm so excited. I cannot wait to do this presentation. We'll still have the breathing going a little bit all over the place, but it'll be much more controlled in a positive way because we're excited. Again, think about it. When you're excited, you don't go into panic mode. You go into, oh my God, this is thrilling mode. But when we're, when we're panicking, we go, oh my God, and that affects our breathing and we just spiral. So I'd say reframe the mind first is going to help with that nerves. But take a nice deep breath in and deep breath out. And focus. Remember, focus on why it matters. Why are you delivering this presentation? It's to share your idea, to share your story with the audience. And that's really important. Um, and we, yes, I can hear talking in the background. I don't know whose microphone is on. Uh, but someone's microphone is on. I could hear random talking uh, in the background. Um, so who has that microphone was of? Just uh, mute yourselves. That'd be amazing. <clears throat> uh, any other questions? Um, I've sort of answered uh, the Q&A ones. Uh, that's fine. Done that one. Done that one. Do, 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 do. Anything else? Anything else about nerves or presentations? or how to make your presentation more interesting or, or more dynamic. Also, I would highly encourage you to, if you're doing loads of Zoom, stand up. As you can see, as you can see I'm not sat down. If I'm sat down, it's kind of quite sort of, I say not to be lazy, but it's kind of quite laid back. I would highly encourage you to stand up because actually <clears throat> that makes you much more engaged in the conversation. You can't sit back. I mean, you could probably lean against a wall here, but you can't sit back and sort of slouch in the meeting, you have to be engaged. Um, yes, Amory, I think that's brilliant. I think it's so, you notice so many people just sort of sit down in their Zoom presentations, and you can see it. And I know people have got headsets on, but if you can, you know, if if there's a way to avoid having to use a headset, you know, that would be amazing. Because actually, you look you you sort of look like a sports commentator or something like that. But actually, here I'm having a conversation with you, and it's getting closer and closer to real life. You know, I know, you know, during lockdown, we're kind of, we're limited on what we can do. But actually, you know, the more we can make it a conversation, you know, the better it will be. So I'd highly encourage you to stand up, deliver your presentation. And also, you have no idea what's, you know, it doesn't, all you need to have is like a small white background works quite nicely. Uh, some people might have virtual backgrounds, which can work fine. But be careful with the virtual background, you can kind of lose it. Like if I did this in a virtual background, you might lose my hand. Or if I picked up like this, you wouldn't be able to see it because it's a weird thing and you'd have to put it here so you didn't lose it. Um, what about presenting for interviews? Any sort of tips for mid-interview transition to presentation where you don't have a few minutes to prepare yourself? So, I, with the interview, I think you can be as prepared as you can possibly be beforehand. So, for example, if they go, right, you're going to do a presentation um, and then you at least you know what you're going to do it on. Uh, if they give you an impromptu presentation, which I'm guessing is unlikely, um, but there are ways to prep for that. And that is to practice doing impromptu presentations. So a great one I like to do with, uh, with, um, with participants is, right, I'm going to give you a random topic and you've got to present that topic for one minute. And I'm not going to give you, you know, I'm going to make up the topic, you know, the um, French Revolution of 2025. 
you're going to have to make it up on the spot for a minute. And what it does is puts you in a situation where you can practice giving those presentations under pressure with no prep time and seeing if you can cope with it. The first two or three, you might fall to pieces and you might go, oh, I can't do this. By the 10th or 11th one, you go, oh, I can do this. Because what we need to do is get you to remain calm under pressure. Because a lot of the time, the nerves go through the roof and the technique goes when we're nervous. Because think about it, when we're nervous, we go into fight or flight mode, we forget everything we've learned and we just sort of, all technique goes. So what we need to do is go, right, can I remain calm under pressure? And remember all of the techniques. So using my voice, using being as clear as possible, being as dynamic as possible. Do I know the content well enough? If you don't know the content well enough, I would highly encourage you to practice, practice, practice. I know in your work lives that it's going to be hard to practice sometimes because you have to do a presentation, you know, tomorrow and you have lives, you know, you have to do this and you have to do this. But I would say be as prepared as you can be. And the more prepared you are, the more confident you'll be in your abilities. And again, have fun. A presentation should be fun. It should be enjoyable. I know it sounds terrifying. And before every presentation, it's like, oh my God, I don't know how I'm going to do this. But actually, if it's something you're really passionate about or interested in, it's going to be amazing. Because also think of it like this. If you got to be good at presentations, if you became competent and great at delivering presentations, what would that do for your career? If you are aspiring to be that manager, that, you know, that CEO, whatever it might be, you're going to have to do a presentation. And if you can do a presentation decently, then it's going to have a real great impact on you. So I'd highly encourage you. And also think of it like a sport. The people at the top of the sports put in the time. They go practice, 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 hours of times. But with the practice, you need to work hard. So you need to, you know, when you're in the practice room, work hard, work smart. So there's no point doing the same thing again and again and again, because it's not going to do anything. We need to progressively overload to so slowly expose either your comfort zone or your technical ability. And you need to work consistently. Consistency, working hard, and you know, working smart are going to be the three ways that are going to really help you to deliver and um, become better at delivering presentations. Um, any other questions? Because I know we've got, we've got some time. We've got 15 minutes. Um, anything else? You can say no. You can say no in the chat. Um, do, 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 do. Is there any q and I've answered those ones. <clears throat> Give it a second. Also, uh, while waiting for any more questions, I would highly encourage you to take up any opportunities um, that you have for delivering presentations. So if you have a chance to go, oh, this, they want a five minute presentation, try that, go, ah, yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that five minute presentation. Uh, slides, uh, what they do or don't do. So I think a slide, the purpose of a slide is to be able to communicate things that your voice cannot do. There is no point having a text heavy slide because I'm either gonna read that slide or I'm gonna listen to you. If I'm gonna read that slide, then there's no point you being in the room. So I would always avoid text heavy slides. There's a couple of exceptions. If you're running a training session where they might have to, uh, they might print off the slides later, or they might go back again and look in more detail. Um, or if English is the second language, they might find it easier to read the slide rather than you speak it. Because some people's listening skills might not be good as their reading skills. So actually having more text on a slide can be beneficial in those instances. But I would highly encourage you to use less words and more photos, more pictures, you know, videos, uh, graphs, make it visually interesting. Because again, we're supposed to listen to you. You're the main part of it. The slides just add and help. Um, what do you do uh, when you ask for audience and they don't? I think, so Jenny, what kind of audience interaction are you, do you ask for? Is it more all oh, raise your hands uh, kind of thing or can everyone shout out? What kind of thing do you end up doing? Yeah, raise hands to give an example. So again, think of it like this. So if you're giving, if you're putting someone on the spot, you go, oh, can anyone got an example? A lot of people are kind of scared of sort of either sharing that because they're scared of what people might think of it or they just don't feel comfortable. So I think, again, it's about having that backup plan. So I think you can warm up the audience so you can find ways to get everyone engaged because actually what you don't want to do is isolate individual audience members, but you can slowly expand them. So you go, right, 
you could go, right, everyone up. Okay, everyone sit up, stand up, everyone up. And just make sure everyone stands up so everyone does it at the same time. And you're right, sit down if you do this. So you can reframe it and change it slightly. So get everyone involved and then reduce the numbers rather than going straight away. We're going, ah, oh, if anyone's got this, put your hand up because everyone feels like, oh, I don't know if I should do this. And also they might not want to answer. But if you get everyone engaged at the same time, then you can kind of help with that. So I would encourage trying that. So everyone stand up if you um, just and start, everyone stand up. Okay, sit down if you, uh, if you do this. Okay, sit down if you do this. Great, lovely. And then ask them like that way. That might be an easier way uh, to do it. But if that doesn't work, I think have a backup plan. So you go, right, they're not going to audience participate in. So go, if no one does it, you go and comment on it. So right, okay, no one, want, no one wanted that or no one answered that. So here's my example and have a backup answer for what you think they might do or what they might say. Um, always a hard one with audience interactive. Like if I told you, you know, if I said, oh, raise your hands here, because even now, kind of even in the chat going, ah, oh, type in your questions. If no one, um, if no one has a question, I'll sort of, I'll ad lib for a bit by saying, ah, I'll talk about this while it gives people a chance um, to write, uh, write potential questions. Um, but if anyone, if anyone has any questions, um, what would you do if you were unable to use your presentation slideshow because of a technical issue? So if you are unable to use your slideshow, I would encourage you, for example, for in my sense, I would stop sharing my screen and I'll just chat to you. Again, the slideshow should add to your presentation. It should not be the sole thing of your presentation. If it is really important, you can send it beforehand and go, right, here's a PDF of stuff, that, some of the things I'm going to talk about. But actually, I want to hear about you. If it's about, you know, if you're pitching to a client, you should know the information of how much your product costs, what it's going to do for them, how they can benefit it from, and then you can give them a brochure at the end. So I'd highly encourage you, if, if things go wrong technically, just keep going. Turn off the slideshow and go, right, I'm going to talk to you. Um, you and me, we're going to have a conversation. And the slideshow is just an added benefit. And I think you can say, look, slideshow's not working, but I can still deliver. Because again, what that shows is you're able to, one, remain calm under pressure, two, cope with change, and three, carry on with your presentation because you know the material well enough that you can deliver it uh, without sort of falling to pieces, and that's really important. Um, lovely. If you want to know more, if you have any more questions, um, you can find me on improvforbusiness.co.uk. Uh, you, uh, you can drop me a message on there. I'm also on LinkedIn. Uh, find me Alexander McWilliam just you know if you have a question or something about this you go, oh I don't know what you meant by this drop me a message and I'm more than happy to answer it or try and help you as best I can um, but I'm going to hand back to uh, to Narinda now uh, for the last couple of slides because uh, they're all uh, Thames Valley Chamber slides um, so thank you very much uh, I've, it's been a pleasure it's really nice to chat to you and answer some of your questions and over to Narinda. Thank you very much, Alexander. Thank you. It's been um, very educational. And um, thank you for touching on this on this topic. It's been very That's interesting. Um, so just going to quickly touch on some chamber slides and I'll come back to um, Alexander in a few, in a couple of minutes. Um, okay, great. Okay, so this is the Thames Valley Chamber of Commerce membership model. It shows how each tier is designed to attract a business depending on the level of exposure they require. Um, and also it's about making um, savings and receiving protection and not just using us as a, um, a marketing platform. So lots of benefits and opportunities we offer as part of the membership and that's all the different membership tiers we have. Um, and you can learn about those by visiting our website, which I've just included there in the corner on the right hand side. Okay, so the Chamber has created a, um, a business continuity toolkit which is aimed at ensuring that you've got access to a single portal. So this is basically around COVID-19, assisting companies um, with business support um, and, and guidance. So there's a, a guidance hub on our website, as soon as you go onto our website, www.tamsfinalychamber.co.uk, on the home page, you'll come across this guidance hub and you can um, click into that and see all the different support available. Some really interesting links in there, um, which gives you um, the information that you might be looking for. So do visit that. Um, okay, next slide. 
Okay, fantastic. So, Alexander, I'd like to say thank you very much again for educating us today on the 10 ways to overcome nerves before your next presentation. So it's an interesting topic that you've touched on. Um, I'm finding more and more people than ever are now delivering virtual presentations because of COVID-19. Um, so your presentation has been very beneficial, educational and engaging. Um, so thank you very much for that. There's contact details there for myself if you would like to contact me regarding membership and also the contact details there for Alexander McWilliam. So uh, you can also link with him on LinkedIn. So he's on LinkedIn, um, Alexander. Would you like to just share your LinkedIn? Yeah, I can go back. I can go back. So my LinkedIn, uh, if you if you missed it, is Alexander McWilliam um, or Improv for Business. uk. Uh, you can find me there. And if you can't find me, just type in Alexander McWilliam Improv for Business on Google or any other search engine, uh, and you'll be able to find me. Uh, find me there. Fantastic. Thank you very much. And um, so just to remind you again, this webinar has been recorded so you can listen to it again and you can use the link from the Chamber website to share it amongst your network. And we'll put it up on our social media channels as well. So that'll be LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, Facebook and Instagram. So we'll put it on there and uh, you can listen to it again. Um, if you've got any last minute questions, please feel free to post them in the chat box. Um, and Alexandra or myself, we can try and answer those for you. Okay, all good. Great. Okay, thank you very much for tuning in, everybody.